Picture the scene. It's eight o'clock on Saturday night and you're sitting in your favourite comfy chair watching telly. Six balls have suddenly changed your life. You used to have a few hundred pounds overdraft in the bank and maybe 18 years left on the mortgage. All of a sudden, that doesn't matter anymore. You've just joined the elite class of people who don't have money worries. By the following Monday morning, this newfound wealth isn't just burning a polite little hole in your pocket, your trousers are a blazing inferno. Now, it's fairly safe to assume that as you're a motoring fan, one of the first things you'd do would be like me, go out and buy a car. But with a limitless budget, what exactly would you buy? Now, I'm not a gambling man and I don't do the lottery, so the likelihood of me finding myself in that position is even less likely than the 18 million to 1 odds of the lottery. But if, say, Aunt Maud, who I'd never ever heard of, left me enormous amounts in her will, I think I know what I'd do. I'd go out and I'd buy a car. For every day, I'd buy a Mercedes, but for those special fun days, I'd buy a Ferrari. I'm talking now to Dave Miller, whose company Forza 288 are Ferrari specialists. Dave, this looks like a real lottery winner's car. Tell me more about it. Well, it's a, it's a recreation of the original 1954 Mondial 500 ST, and as you can see, somebody has painstakingly recreated what is probably the nearest recreation you'll get, so authentically done. And basically, it's a car for fun. It certainly is a fabulous car. What sort of speed is it capable of? It's capable of about 130 miles an hour, which without a screen, it's uh, pretty horrendous. <laughs> and your face tends to get pulled back if you uh, reach anything over 80 or 90, although I've never done that on, the, uh, on any of the British roads. Obviously. Flies in the teeth stuff. Eh? Absolutely, Steve. Excellent. Dave, you're not just a Ferrari specialist, you're a real enthusiast, aren't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. You have to be to actually sell the cars and be ever involved in them. I've been now selling them for nearly 20 years, and every car's special, and every car's a delight to drive. They're all different, they're all hand-built and you just feel that part of Enzo Ferrari is in every one. There's a real passion, it's not just the red, is it? It's oh, no, no. In fact, we've had them in most colours uh, that's available from the factory, Gialafly, yellow, silver, blue. Um, we actually live, eat, sleep and breathe Ferraris at home, and uh, they're just a way of life. So do you have non-road cars as well as the, the, obvious, the obvious sports we cars? We have, the, yes, the occasional sports racing car that comes in, but the majority of them are road cars. The actual sports racing cars as such were built in very, very small numbers and sold basically to, um, to racing enthusiasts who took them on the track. And it's a diff slightly different market, although one that I'm very interested in. Cars over the years, especially the last 20 years, have changed out of all recognition. And this is true of Ferraris as well. Do they still have the, the same degree of passion as, say, a classic Ferrari like this one? Yes, I think even the, you know, when you go to the 550s and the 355s, They've kept up with tradition, not only in the Ferrari spirit, but they've also kept up with the actual design, build quality, and they're now a car that really is unique in every sense of the way, and they've kept ahead always. They've always been that one step ahead of anything else that you would, would actually consider buying in that market. They are the ultimate car. So with the hypothetical lottery winner coming to you with this large, large bundle of cash, would you advise him against buying certain Ferraris because they're too wild to drive, or are they all easy to drive, or what? It, Steve, it depends on the person. <laughs> I think if a, a young, a very young person who's driving in, has inexperience, I would suggest that he didn't start on a Ferrari of a 12-cylinder car to start with, maybe start with something very much smaller, like a Dino or a, probably a GT4, to get the feel of driving a Ferrari and then maybe go into the slightly bigger stuff, bigger engine stuff, to gain his experience of driving a car. What was your first Ferrari then? Well, to be honest with you, I started with Alfa Romeo's, as did Enzo Ferrari. He, he drove for Alfa Romeo before he um, set up the Ferrari company himself, and I started with Alfa Romeo's and I think they're a wonderful little car. I then ventured, my first Ferrari was um, a 308 GT4, and that was it, the passion that got me, and I couldn't ever buy any other car or have any other car to drive for myself or to sell. Did you ever meet the great Enzo? No, unfortunately I didn't.
Well, I'm sorry to say that during the making of this item, I haven't received any communications at all from Aunt Maud's solicitors. Therefore, she either doesn't exist or she hasn't left me any money. Either ways, the end result is the same. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Dave.